In this video, I'll be doing a home energy audit, or at least the thermal leakage part of the home energy audit, with the aid of an infrared or thermal camera. Um, here is my front door. And here is the same door in the infrared spectrum. Now, this particular thermal camera is a FLIR E4, their lowest uh, E-series model. The resolution is not nearly as good as what we would expect in something like a visible light camera. But these things are kind of pricey and the resolution is a little lower. Something to know when looking at these images, the upper left hand corner is recording the temperature of what the targeting reticle in the center is looking at. The scale is on the right. The scale is important to pay attention to when using these kinds of devices because the color will shift to try to maximize contrast. So if we were to take this camera and move it and point it towards uh, an air conditioning vent, we see that the scale changes significantly. So the areas around the vent now are a, a yellowish uh, color, whereas they would have been a darker color if we were actually looking outside because the scale's changed. So let's uh, take a look at some things. This is the front entry door. Uh, not a real surprise there. We have uh, gaps and therefore leaks uh, conducting heat through the top and bottom of the door, as, as well as the glass itself. This is an insulated door, but if you don't have a good seal around the perimeter, you'll have some leaks. Here is our aforementioned output or register vent for our air conditioning system. It should be noted that outside it is 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Uh, the general temperature of the interior of the house is around 73, 74 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a pair of French doors leaking some heat. And this is the living room. Now, there are several things of interest in the living room. First off, let us look. Here's the entertainment center. First off of interest is off to the right here, we have a subwoofer. Now, this uh, particular piece of equipment has not been turned on or actively used uh, in at least the last 22-something uh, hours. But we can see that we are producing a good bit of heat because some portion of this device is always on. And if you're trying to maximize the efficiency of cooling, uh, this is a problem because any heat produced is not only electricity consumed to produce the heat or whatever electrical process caused it to be produced in the first place, but you're also spending energy in the air conditioning to move the heat outside of the house. We can also see a bit of heat coming off the PS3 here. Now, something of note, the PS3 looks like it's sending off some heat from around this area. This is actually reflected. The plastic is metalized to give it a chromy finish, and that metalized film is a radiant barrier. It reflects infrared, and actually the infrared that it's seeing now is my infrared reflection in it. Over here, we have the home theater PC, uh, where its power supply located is somewhat obvious. And also off to the right, we have a UPS. And the UPS's batteries are pretty much in a constant state of charging. And so it is consuming some heat. Now, of a special interest is the wall behind it. Now, we don't see any form of duct or vent, but we clearly have something along this wall, up and down, that is uh, cooler than the rest of it. And if we come around, here we have a sunroom, and we have an excellent, excellent contrast here, uh, which we'll get to in a second. But over here, we have the UPS and the home theater PC. We have this cooler spot along the wall. Now if we come around the corner, here we have a bookshelf, and we notice it's much cooler, and the bookshelf is hiding some of this, but if we go above the bookshelf, we can see bleed through. The main air conditioning trunk, or the main ventil uh, ducting trunk, for this part of the house runs behind this wall. So in addition to detecting leaks, we can also tell something about the mechanical systems of the house. This isn't terribly surprising in the sunroom. We have event here and over here and in the infrared they show up really really well so they're a lot colder than everything else and we have heat galore 
bleeding in through the room. Now, something of great interest, and these are the types of things that are really cool to discover when you're doing these types of audits. Here in the ceiling, we can see areas that are significantly warmer than the areas around them. Some of this can, sometimes this is bleed through from the heat coming out of, of windows. The hot air rises and starts heating your ceiling. This, however, is an indication that the insulation that exists above this ceiling does not cover all the way to the corner of the house. What we're looking at here is obvious an exterior wall because we have windows in it. Uh, so we're missing some insulation here. If we go back, we can also see a few other culp gadget culprits of heat production. We have the back of the printer. The blinding light down there is also another UPS. Here we have the NAS, and we can also tell where the power supply for the NAS is because of where all the heat is coming from. Now, on to a couple more interesting things. Here in the kitchen, we have a vent. And the vent is pumping out air this way. And if we look in the infrared, we can see that this is clearly very cold compared to the surrounding air. On the other side of the wall, however, we have a cold spot. This is an indication that the vent is I the duct that feeds this vent is either tightly compressed against the wall, uh, squeezing, compressing the insulation, and we are conducting uh, some heat through, in this case, uh, losing heat to the AC. Uh, or we actually have an air leak where the duct is not firmly affixed to the vent on the other side of the wall and some of the air is getting behind here and is cooling this wall. If it's cooling this wall from the inside, it also means it's cooling the spaces in between the walls, which isn't terribly useful for human comfort. Here we have the refrigerator. Uh, the refrigerator is actually has this another metallized film on it and so it reflects uh, a lot of IR, so you get ghost images that aren't really its production of heat. However, what is interesting here is behind it. We see that there is a significant heat source from behind the refrigerator. This is normal. Uh, refrigerators, uh, any kind of form of mechanical refrigeration doesn't make cooling so much as it moves heat elsewhere. So the interior of the refrigerator is cold because the heat is moved outside the refrigerator. In this case, the heat exchanger is on the back of the refrigerator, as is the general case. And so the area behind the refrigerator is being heated. That heat, of course, eventually makes its way into the house and is eventually removed from the house by your central air conditioner. It should be noted that these, this, uh, this particular camera, this E4, does not natively record video, which is why normally when you see internet videos reviewing these, they have a camera pointed at the back of the device. However, if you hook it up via USB, you can use it as effectively as a webcam and record it the same way. Here we have the stairs going up to the top floor. We have a window, of course, rather hot. We also have a hot spot down here, uh, possibly due to missing insulation, or this house was built in, I think, 86. The insulation may have slid down uh, the wall somewhat. Here we have a set of vents, but these aren't particularly cold. This is an intake, or what they would call a return vent. This pulls air back into the air conditioning system, or into the um, central HVAC uh, after it circulated through the house. Now, here in the bathroom, what is of special interest is this. We have what is clearly a significant either failure of insulation or some kind of concentration of heat. Uh, if we put our reticle on the uh, area, this area of the wall, we can see it is significantly hotter than it should be otherwise, especially considering we have a an air conditioning vent right here. So there is something going on in this wall. I haven't had a chance to investigate this thoroughly yet. 
Also, if we go into the ceiling, this is an extraction fan, and specifically, its motor is rather hot. Uh, this is either from being connected to the outside via a duct, or it is actually consuming some type of electrical power, even when idle. Uh, in either case, it is quite warm. Here, in the master bedroom, or master suite, the bedroom of the master suite, we have an output vent over here on the wall. We have an input, or a return, which is quite hot. But the real takeaway from this particular room is up here. This room has a tray ceiling, and it is not uncommon whatsoever for insulation that's put on top of the tray ceiling to slip off over time. And some of these spots are, are very hot. But this is something that might be addressed by going up into the ceiling, taking a look around, seeing if insulation has fallen off, or even if you have sufficient insulation. When this house was originally built, uh, the ceiling spaces, attic spaces, only had about two inches of, ins of um, fiberglass insulation in them. Uh, if you have a contractor come out to upgrade the insulation in these types of spaces, they'll probably put around two feet or so. Here on this wall, we also have another air conditioning output. Here we can see the influence of objects around uh, our vents. We can see that the air is cooling this wall, also cooling the side of this cover. If this cover were any further over, it would obviously interfere with the airflow here and prevent the cooling. However, a better example of that actually occurs over here. Here we can see that the door stop for this door stops the door immediately over a vent. So the door is quite cool. The airflow constrained behind the door makes the wall quite cool. But it's not really helping the rest of the room. Another culprit of losing a tremendous amount of uh, energy and leaking heat in and out of the house is attic access. This access actually has a tent uh, around the interior separating it from the uh, direct airspace of the attic, as well as a non-trivial amount of insulation, but we can still see that we are transmitting a, a reasonable amount of heat back and forth. It, any penetration that goes into the attic is capable of doing such things. So in addition to a direct attic access, here we have a ceiling fan, or a whole house fan. This is a bathroom in the process of being renovated. Here we have a conventional window. And there was formerly a window in this position as well. It, however, was removed when the house was recited. So outside of this window is siding and uh, 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 exterior foam insulation. And then there is this piece of plywood. However, there is, of course, no fiberglass insulation or interior drywall, and we can see, relative to the surrounding area, exactly how little insulation that's providing. Also of note, if we look over here at the hand towels, get a little bit more definition if we turn the light on. We see this dark spot. This dark spot is not present in the visible spectrum. This is water. Um, someone has dried their hands on this towels, and the evaporative cooling is decreasing the temperature of the towel. This evaporative cooling is also why the toilet is significantly cooler. And now we come here. And 
And now we come to the garage. This was originally a carport that was converted into a garage. Of obvious standout is the car itself. This car has only been parked for about 30 minutes or so, so we can see not only the heat from its engine, but also the heat from the tires and the brakes. The walls of this garage are insulated. The ceiling, however, is not, as the walls were put in significantly later. A couple of interesting things to look at in spaces like this. If we look at the ceiling, this space is not insulated. And so what we can see are the beams that support the roof itself they conduct heat differently than the air that would convect around in this space. So visibly, there doesn't seem to be anything here, but in the infrared, we can clearly see where these beams contact the plywood that makes up the roof of this, uh, or the inside ceiling of this garage. Also, we can take a look at the garage doors themselves. Now, these doors are insulated. However, the metal bits that hold them together conduct heat pretty well. Also, if we're looking at the back of the car, we can see what is effectively uh, heat soak from wheels, brakes, and also at the back of the car, the exhaust system. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the kinds of things that you can see uh, and find with a thermal imaging camera. These cameras are actually quite expensive. This E4 model, the lowest in the E series that FLIR makes, uh, runs around $1,000, and it's the, the bottom line for this type of camera. However, you can find places that will rent them to you, and most of the time you'll use them to identify problems, concerns within a structure, and then you're done with them, and you might possibly rent it once more if you wanted to verify that your fixes had actually worked. Uh, the best time to use these devices is generally when you can get the greatest contrast, either in the hottest or coldest parts of the year. And it will also change what you're looking for, the hot spots or the cold spots. Because it's 90 degrees outside now and mid-70s inside nominally, the hot spots are what we're looking for. The opposite would be true if you were in winter. Uh, winter, however, can be much more, you get a lot more contrast because the temperature difference between what humans are comfortable at and the kinds of climates we live in is significantly more extreme in terms of absolute temperature during winter. I hope that helps.